driving theory test practice. Topic 8. Vehicle handling. Knowing how to control your vehicle under different circumstances while driving is an essential skill. And the questions in this section address that topic. Vehicle handling is affected by the quality of the road surface by weather conditions and the type of road you are on. Less than perfect conditions will require you to have knowledge of brake fade, engine braking, wet brakes, using headlights and overtaking. Coasting is to be avoided as the brake systems and power steering do not work properly if the car is in neutral. Question 1 of 51. When may you overtake another vehicle on the left? A. When you're in a one-way street. B. When a slower vehicle is traveling in the right-hand lane of a dual carriageway. C. When approaching a motorway slip road where you'll be turning off. D. When the vehicle in front is signaling to turn left. The correct answer is A. When you're in a one-way street. Explanation. You may pass slower vehicles on their left while traveling along a one-way street. Be aware of drivers who may need to change lanes and may not expect faster traffic passing on their left. Question 2 of 51. You're traveling in very heavy rain. How is this likely to affect your overall stopping distance? A. It will be halved. B. It will be doubled. C. It will be 10 times greater. D. It will be no different. The correct answer is B. It will be doubled. Explanation. The road will be very wet and spray from other vehicles will reduce your visibility. Tire grip will also be reduced. Increasing your stopping distance. You should at least double your separation distance. Question 3 of 51. What should you do when you're overtaking at night? A. Put your headlights on full beam. B. Be aware of bends in the road ahead. C. Wait until a bend so that you can see oncoming headlights. D. Sound your horn twice before moving out. The correct answer is B. Be aware of bends in the road ahead. Explanation. Don't overtake if there's a possibility of a road junction, bend or brow of a bridge or hill ahead. There are many hazards that are difficult to see in the dark. Only overtake if you're certain that the road ahead is clear. Don't take a chance. Question 4 of 51. When may you wait in a box junction? A. When approaching a zebra crossing. B. When approaching a pelican crossing. C. When you're stationary in a queue of traffic. D. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. The correct answer is... B. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. Explanation. The purpose of a box junction is to keep the junction clear by preventing vehicles from stopping in the path of crossing traffic. You mustn't enter a box junction unless your exit is clear. However, you may enter the box and wait if you want to turn right and are only prevented from doing so by oncoming traffic. Question 5 of 51. Which of these plates normally appears with this road sign? Pump bridge. B. Soft verge. C. Low bridge. D. Pumps for half a mile. The correct answer is B. Pumps for half a mile. Explanation. Road humps are used to slow down traffic. They're found in places where there are often pedestrians, such as shopping areas, near schools, residential areas. Watch out for people close to the curb or crossing the road. Question 6 of 51. What do traffic calming measures do? A. Stop road rage. B. Slow traffic down. C. Make overtaking easier. D. Make parking easier. The correct answer is B. Slow traffic down. Explanation. Traffic calming measures make the road safer for vulnerable road users such as cyclists, pedestrians, and children. These can be designed as chicanes, road humps, or other obstacles that encourage drivers and riders to slow down. Question 7 of 51. You're on a motorway in fog. The left-hand edge of the motorway can be identified by reflective studs. What color are they? A. Red. B. Green. C. 
C. White B. Amber. The correct answer is A. Red. Explanation. Be especially careful if you're on a motorway in fog. Reflective studs are there to help you in poor visibility. Different colors are used so that you'll know which lane you're in. These are red on the left-hand edge of the carriageway, white between lanes, amber on the right-hand edge of the carriageway, green between the carriageway and slip road. Question 8 of 51. What's the rumble device designed to do? A. Alert you to a hazard. B. Alert you to low tire pressure. C. Give directions. D. Prevent cattle escaping. The correct answer is A. Alert you to a hazard. Explanation. A rumble device consists of raised markings or strips across the road designed to give drivers an audible, visual and tactile warning. These devices are used in various locations including in the line separating the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane on the motorway and on the approach to some hazards to alert drivers to the need to slow down. Question 9 of 51. What should you do when making a journey in foggy conditions? A. Avoid using dipped headlights. B. Leave plenty of time for your journey. C. Follow other vehicles' tail lights closely. D. Keep two seconds behind the vehicle ahead. The correct answer is B. Leave plenty of time for your journey. Explanation. If you're planning to make a journey when it's foggy, listen to the weather reports. If visibility is very poor, avoid making unnecessary journeys. If you do travel, leave plenty of time. And if someone is waiting for you to arrive, let them know that your journey will take longer than normal. This will also take off any pressure you may feel to rush. Question 10 of 51. What must you do when overtaking a car at night? A. Make sure you don't dazzle other road users. B. Switch your lights to full beam before overtaking. C. Select a higher gear. D. Flash your headlights before overtaking. The correct answer is A. Make sure you don't dazzle other road users. Explanation. To prevent your lights from dazzling the driver of the car in front, wait until you've passed them before switching to full beam. Question 11 of 51. You're traveling on a road that has speed humps. What should you do when the driver in front is traveling more slowly than you? A. Slow down and stay behind. B. Flash your headlights. C. Overtake as soon as you can. D. Sound your horn. The correct answer is A. Slow down and stay behind. Explanation. Be patient and stay behind the car in front. You shouldn't normally overtake other vehicles in areas subject to traffic calming. If you overtake here, you may easily exceed the speed limit, defeating the purpose of the traffic calming measures. Question 12 of 51. You see these markings on the road. Why are they there? A. To keep the area clear of traffic. B. To make you aware of your speed. C. To show a safe distance between vehicles. D. To warn you to change direction. The correct answer is B. To make you aware of your speed. Explanation. These lines may be painted on the road on the approach to a roundabout, a village or a particular hazard. The lines are raised and painted yellow, and their purpose is to make you aware of your speed. Reduce your speed in good time so that you avoid having to brake harshly over the last few meters before reaching the junction. Question 13 of 51. How would you identify a section of road used by trams? A. There would be yellow hatch markings around it. B. There would be metal studs around it. C. There would be zigzag markings alongside it. D. There would be a different surface texture. The correct answer is B. There would be a different surface texture. Explanation. Trams may run on roads used by other vehicles and pedestrians. The section of road used by trams is known as the reserved area and should be kept clear. It usually has a different surface edged with white lane markings.
Question 14 of 51. What should you do when you meet an oncoming vehicle on a single track road? A. Carry out an emergency stop. B. Switch on your hazard warning lights. C. Reverse back to the main road. D. Stop at a passing place. The correct answer is B. Stop at a passing place. Explanation. Take care when using single track roads. It can be difficult to see around bends because of hedges or fences. So expect to meet oncoming vehicles. Drive carefully and be ready to pull into a or stop opposite a passing place where you can pass each other safely. Question 15 of 51. The road is wet. Why might a motorcyclist steer around rain covers on a bend? A. To avoid splashing pedestrians on the pavement. B. To help judge the bend using the drain covers as marker points. C. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. D. To avoid puncturing the tires on the edge of the drain covers. The correct answer is C. To prevent the motorcycle sliding on the metal drain covers. Explanation. Other drivers or riders may have to change course due to the size or characteristics of their vehicle. Understanding this will help you to anticipate their actions. Motorcyclists and cyclists will be checking the road ahead for uneven or slippery surfaces, especially in wet weather. They may need to move across their lane to avoid surface hazards such as potholes and drain covers. Question 16 of 51. After this hazard you should test your brakes. Why is this? A. You'll have just crossed the long bridge. B. You'll be going down a long hill. C. You'll be on a slippery road. D. Your brakes will be soaking wet. The correct answer is D. Your brakes will be soaking wet. Explanation. A ford is a crossing over a stream that's shallow enough to drive or ride through. After you've gone through a ford or deep puddle, your brakes will be wet and they won't work as well as usual. To dry them out, apply a light brake pressure while moving slowly. Don't travel at normal speeds until you're sure your brakes are working properly again. Question 17 of 51. Why should you always reduce your speed when traveling in fog? A. You'll be dazzled by other headlights. B. The brakes don't work as well. C. It's more difficult to see what's ahead. D. The engine will take longer to warm up. The correct answer is C. It's more difficult to see what's ahead. Explanation. You won't be able to see as far ahead in fog as you can on a clear day. You'll need to reduce your speed so that, if the hazard looms out of the fog, you have the time and space to take avoiding action. Traveling in fog is hazardous. If you can, try to delay your journey until it has cleared. Question 18 of 51. How will your vehicle be affected when you drive up steep hills? A. The higher gears will pull better. B. The steering will feel heavier. C. Overtaking will be easier. D. The engine will work harder. The correct answer is D. The engine will work harder. Explanation. The engine will need more power to pull the vehicle up the hill. When approaching a steep hill you should select a lower gear to help maintain your speed. You should do this without hesitation so that you don't lose too much speed before engaging the lower gear. Question 19 of 51. You're driving on the motorway in windy conditions. What should you do as you pass a high-sided vehicle? A. Expect normal conditions. B. Be wary of a sudden gust. C. Increase your speed. D. Drive alongside very closely. The correct answer is C. Be wary of a sudden gust. Explanation. The drought caused by other vehicles, particularly those with high sides, could be strong enough to push you out of your lane. Be prepared for a sudden gust of wind as you pass large vehicles. Keep both hands on the steering wheel to help you keep full control. Question 20 of 51. What should you do to correct a rear wheel skid? A. Steer away from it. B. Apply your handbrake. C. Steer into it. 
C. Not steer at all. The correct answer is C. Steer into it. Explanation. If your car skids and the rear wheels slide to the right, you need to steer into the skid, i.e. to the right, until the front and rear wheels are brought into line. Don't oversteer or you'll cause a skid in the opposite direction and this will make the situation worse. Question 21 of 51. You're driving in fog. Why should you keep well back from the vehicle in front? A. In case it stops suddenly. B. In case its fog lights dazzle you. C. In case it changes direction suddenly. D. In case its brake lights dazzle you. The correct answer is. A. In case it stops suddenly. Explanation. If you're following another road user in fog, stay well back. The driver in front won't be able to see hazards until they're close and might need to brake suddenly. Also, the road surface is likely to be wet and could be slippery. Question 22 of 51. What should you do if you park on the road when it's foggy? A. Leave dip headlights and fog lights switched on. B. Leave side lights switched on. C. Leave main beam headlights switched on. D. Leave dip headlights switched on. The correct answer is. B. Leave side lights switched on. Explanation. If you have to park your vehicle in foggy conditions, try to find a place to park off the road. If this isn't possible, park on the road facing in the same direction as the traffic. Leave your side lights switched on and make sure they're clean. Question 23 of 51. You're driving at night in the dazzled by vehicle headlights coming towards you. What should you do? A. Flash your main beam headlights. B. Shade your eyes with your hand. C. Pull down your sun visor. D. Slow down or stop. The correct answer is D. Slow down or stop. Explanation. If the headlights of an oncoming vehicle dazzle you, slow down or, if necessary, stop. Don't close your eyes or swerve, as you'll increase your chances of having a collision. Don't flash your headlights either, as this could dazzle other drivers and make the situation worse. Question 24 of 51. When may front fog lights be used? A. When they aren't as bright as the headlights. B. When they're fitted above the bumper. C. When visibility is seriously reduced. D. When an audible warning device is used. The correct answer is... C. When visibility is seriously reduced. Explanation. Your fog lights must only be used when visibility is reduced to 100 meters, 328 feet, or less. You need to be familiar with the layout of your dashboard so you're aware if your fog lights have been switched on in error, or you've forgotten to switch them off. Question 25 of 51. You're driving with your front fog lights switched on. Earlier fog has now cleared. What should you do? A. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. B. Flash them to warn oncoming traffic that it's foggy. C. Drive with them on instead of your headlights. D. Leave them on if other drivers have their lights on. The correct answer is A. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. Explanation. Switch off your fog lights if the weather improves, but be prepared to use them again if visibility reduces to less than 100 meters 328 feet.